This is an overview of ITG Center Program Management. I'm Jack Campbell. In this video, I will show you how to create a program in ITG Center and we'll talk about some things you need to be aware of concerning tracking issues, risks, and scope changes as they relate to program management. I've already logged into ITG Center. To create a program, click on Create in the top menu bar and select Program. Enter the program name and click the Add Project button. Select the projects to be added to the program. These projects must already exist in ITG Center in order to be able to add them to the program. Then click OK. There are some optional fields available such as description, benefit, and business objectives where you can provide additional information about the program, but for now I'm going to skip the optional fields and click create to create the program. Once the program has been created, the view program page is displayed. At the top of this page there are buttons for modifying the program, program settings, and configuring access. Let's take a look at the program settings. Although the tool will allow you to, we ask that you do not change the settings here. You want to be sure to leave the Enable Financial Management box unchecked because we're not using this feature in the tool. And for the health indicator, we want them to be consistent across the organization, so we ask that you do not change how they are tracked. Click Cancel to return to the View Program page. The View Program page also provides several default portlets. There is the list of projects that shows the percent complete, project status, the scheduled start and end dates, as well as the project managers for each project in the program. There are also portlets that provide a graphical summary of the issues, risks, and scope changes that are being tracked in this program. There are a couple things that are important to know about issues, risks, and scope changes as they relate to a program. As you know, these events can be tracked in ITG Center for each project. Let's take a look at one of the projects in our program. This is the project summary page for the GIS Statewide Infrastructure Project. Notice at the top of the summary page there is a portlet that lists any programs that this project is associated with. Scrolling down the page, we see the port list where issues, risks, and scope changes are tracked for the project. Issues are problems that exist today and are currently impacting the individual projects or the program as a whole. They need to be addressed. Risks are potential issues. They currently don't exist, but they could occur, and you need to plan how to avoid them or how to handle them if they do occur. It is important for the project manager to track these events for their projects. This is even more important when a project is associated with a program since these issues, risks, and scope changes not only impact the success of the project, but may also impact the program. We see here that the project manager has entered an issue. Clicking on the name of the issue brings me to the issue details. There are a couple of things to note when tracking issues for a project, the escalation level and the priority. For the escalation level, if I click on the drop-down menu, I can see that the options are either program or project. In most cases, if a project is associated with a program, it is a good idea to set the escalation level to program. This makes the issue visible at the program level, so the program manager is aware of the issues. The default for the escalation level is projects, so you want to be sure to change this if the project is associated with a program. Also be aware that the priority you select for the issues that are escalated to the program will impact the issue health for the program. When we return to the View Program page, I'll point out how issue health is displayed in the program. Let's take a look at risk. Risks work a little bit differently than issues. If you enter a risk in any project that's associated with a program, that risk will automatically be visible in the program. Clicking on the name of the risk brings me to the risk details. There are a couple of things to note when tracking risks for a project, the probability and impact level. Be aware that the values you select for probability and impact level will impact the risk health for the program. Finally, let's take a look at scope change. Events that change the scope of a project may affect the scope of any programs that project is associated with. Clicking on the name of the scope change brings me to the scope change details. There are a couple of things to note when tracking scope change for a project, the CR level and the business impact severity. 
The CR level indicates the impact of the scope change. Only scope changes with level 1 or level 2 impact are visible in the program. The business impact severity represents the severity of the impact the scope change will have on the business. The value you select for the business impact severity will impact the scope change health for the program. There is help text available for both of these items to help you make appropriate choices. I've closed out of the project now and I'm back in the View Program page. We saw how issues from a project can be escalated to the program. In addition, a program manager can also track program issues that are not necessarily related to any one project but are impacting the program. To enter a program issue, go to Create in the top menu bar and select Program Issue. Finally, looking at the portlets for Issues, Risks, and Scope Change in the View Program page, notice that you can see the overall health for each indicated by a colored square in the upper left corner. Also notice that issues are displayed by their priority, scope changes by their severity, and risk by their impact level. The View Program page provides some valuable information. However, you are not limited to just what you see here. There are additional portlets that the program manager has access to. This concludes the second video in the ITG Center Program Management Overview. In the next video, we will take a look at the recommended program management portlets and how to configure them.